Well, hey everyone, just recently I posted a video sharing the method that I use for insulating my cabin floors, a method that has served me very well over the years. But like all YouTube creators, you post something, you get your share of experts clickety-clacking away, spouting numbers, R factors, this and that, trying to prove you wrong. Lots were saying that the method that I use simply doesn't work. I beg to differ. A toasty, warm cabin says otherwise. So I'm going to do a little recap for all that are interested. We're just going to look at this from a few different perspectives. So here we go. If you have a cabin that's up on piers, I can't overemphasize the importance of having it skirted. If I had to make a choice between having an insulated floor with no skirting or having insulated skirting and no insulation in the floor, I would choose having the skirting. It, when we did this, it made a night and day difference. All the difference in the world. Well worth the effort. What I did for skirting here was this was framed with pressure treated two by fours, put my exterior wall here, and on the inside of the two by four studding, I stapled up one layer of this bubble foil. Yeah, I was told don't call it bubble foil, call it reflective radiant barrier insulation, etc., etc. That's too much of a mouthful. Bubble foil works for me, so that's what it is. And it works damn good, and I'll tell you that. This is outside the skirting. The ground underneath that ice is hard as concrete. This is just three quarter inch plywood with some bubble foil stapled to the back side, which I will show you. Right here, I just have an old piece of slate. But right here, inside, not frozen, okay? There's no heater on under the cabin. The ground is soft, the ground is hard. Now, I don't care what the R factor is or what all the experts have to say. The proof is in pudding, and this is frozen pudding, okay? And a foot away, the earth is as soft as summertime. Works for me. You can make up your mind if you want to use it or not. I don't really care. I'm not working for Reflectix. They don't send me free rolls of insulation. I'm not on the payroll. I get paid absolutely nothing for this. All I'm doing here is sharing my experiences because there's a lot of folks out there that have a cabin up on piers and have suffered with the same frustrations that I've had where rodents and ants ruin your insulation. I have nothing to gain here. Just passing on the information. That's it. Now these doors here, all I did was three quarter inch plywood and I stapled up one layer of the foil on the inside. That's it. The ground is frozen hard as concrete and right here it's soft. I don't know what proof you need beyond that. But one of the comments that came in on my last video was doing the insulation in the manner that I did won't work because the floor joists will get cold and transfer that cold up into the floor system. There is some truth to that, but sometimes you got to look at things from different perspectives, okay? Like I mentioned in the other video, I have a, a friend of mine who goes crazy with insulation. Everything is buttoned up. Everything is spray foamed. It tries to get to R70, but then it's buttoned up so tight that he has to run an air exchanger. That doesn't really make much sense to me, okay? Trying to conserve energy with one hand and then burning energy with the other hand, all right? 
As I already mentioned, it works much better. It insulates much better by rolling the insulation out on top of the floor joist and then sandwiching this foil between your subfloor and the floor joist. It insulates tremendously that way. But by doing it this way, which was the only choice that I had, actually worked in my favor. And I'll explain why. If I insulate the floor system too heavily, so there's no chance of any cold seeping through the floor, that will also mean there's no chance of any heat seeping through the floor. And if I have plumbing under here, and the skirting is insulated real heavily, and the floor is insulated real heavily, and I'm not running any heat under here, then my plumbing is going to freeze. Okay? So you got to look at things from different perspectives. So by doing it this way, which again was the only way that we could do it, worked in our favor. The floors are nice and warm. There's no cold air blowing in under here, but possibly by doing it this way, some heat has transferred through these joists or just enough heat is working its way through the floor. But even near 30 below zero, this jug of water on the ground under here never froze. So to say that doing it this way doesn't work is nothing short of bullshit. Pardon my French, but that is just the way it is. Okay? I want to reiterate the fact that when I first got my shed delivered about a dozen years ago, and they put this foil in the floor... If it didn't work so good and I wasn't so impressed at how warm my shed stayed, I wouldn't have rolled the stuff out over the floor joist of the cabin that I built. Then I certainly wouldn't have rolled it out over the floor joist of the workshop that I built. And then I wouldn't have rolled it out over the floor joist of the shed that I built. I wouldn't have ordered the other shed with the foil in the floor and I wouldn't have crawled around on my back under here, stapling it up. It works. It doesn't absorb water. It's lightweight and easy to put up by myself. The rodents don't bother it. The ants don't bother it. It insulates beyond belief, and it's affordable. That's all I need, okay? In the next place that I built, I will put it up again. So regardless if the R factor on this is crap, means nothing to me because it works, okay? But if you are skeptical, don't spend a dime on it. You can cut and fit all your foam if you want. You can put foam under here. You can put fiberglass in here and then spend all the money for wire or put plywood under here that was suggested to me. Running plywood under here with all these old girders and posts and garbage would have been a horror show. Well, we just went around, stapled this stuff up, and the floors are nice and toasty. Now another comment that came in was stapling this stuff to the cold side of the floor will trap moisture and rot my floor. Okay. Let's tear off a little bit and find out. I'm curious to know. I certainly want to know if it is rotting my floor. Does that look like it's rotting my floor? It's dry as a bone. All right. I can feel the warmth of that board. I'm going to get that staple back up. Yeah. So what do you make of that, huh? The underside of the floor is dry as a bone. The ground outside the skirting is as hard as concrete. But yet inside the skirting, it's as soft as it was summertime. And this jug of water sitting on the floor here, on the ground, is liquid. 
and not ice. I think we're debunking a few myths here today that the bubble foil, oh, radiant reflective insulation doesn't work. <laughs> Let's go down to the other end and I want to show another reason why I didn't put the bubble foil like this. In the first part of this video, I said how I had concerns that if I ran insulation under here, that it would create a warm cavity up here that might attract rodents. Okay, lots of suggestions came in that I should insulate it with fiberglass and then put plywood under here. I could do all kinds of things like that. Well, if I did that, I have no way of knowing if there's a rodent up in here chewing all the insulation off of my wires. If you've handled these wires with bare hands and got all your salty sweat on them, rodents are going to want to chew on them. And if you button all this up so you can't see those wires, you have no idea what's going on up in there. And I've lived in the woods long enough that I know that any warm cavity is going to attract rodents in the wintertime. Okay, my floor is insulated. I can get at my wiring. I can see my wiring. It works. I'm good. Done deal. Well, that's about it in a nutshell, folks. And there's no nutshells in my insulation because the rodents want nothing to do with it. If you want to base your opinion on our factors alone, that's your business. But myself, I like to make my decisions without blinders on and look at them from several different perspectives. So far, this stuff has worked really good for me. And the next place I build, I can guarantee you, I'll be stapling this up under the floor. So that's it for now, folks. All the best to you. God bless. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did and you'd like to see more of The Cabin Life, please click the subscribe button so that you can follow along with future updates. All the best to you and God bless.